Keeping creativity alive because we just won't quit, here's another design just for you, the Complex Ladder Stitch Bracelet. The Complex Ladder Stitch Bracelet is a creation that almost looks basic, but a little advanced. A symbol with bead blocks and bead rows, definitely a bracelet you should give a chance. Dream of a color scheme that'll make everyone stop and stare. A bead bracelet, of course, you'll want to wear and share. This design is great, and of course, it's fast, fun, and easy to make. So let's get ready for this tutorial, satisfy your creative needs, feel free to give this video a like, enjoy this episode of Turbo Beats. <laughs> Here's a list of everything you need to make the complex ladder stitch bead bracelet. Making the complex ladder stitch bracelet is pretty simple. We'll start out by using the straw technique. What we'll do is we'll take a straw and split it down the center by cutting it with scissors. So just watch close as I carefully cut the straw down the center. Splitting that straw down the center will make it easier to add beads to that straw. Basically, what we're doing is using that straw as a stabilizer for the rows of beads to keep them straight, aligned, and in place. With that straw split down the middle, we can now add two chartreuse beads to that straw. Now that we have those beads on the straw, we're going to cut off the end of that straw, keeping it from showing to the sides. As you can see, we have this row of two beads looking just like this. Of course, we'll need to make a lot more of these in order to make a bracelet. So using that straw that's been split down the center, we're going to add two more chartreuse beads to the straw. Then we're going to cut off the end of that straw, keeping it from showing to the sides. We'll continue using these same steps, creating more of these stabilized bead rows of two until we have enough of these to make a bracelet. I'll be using the color chartreuse and pink for these stabilized rows of beads. Just like we've done before, you'll add your beads to that straw that's been split down the center. Once you have those beads on that straw, you'll carefully cut off the end of that straw, keeping it from showing through the sides. This will give us our bead row of two, looking just like this. As you can see, I've created enough of these bead rows of two to fill out a bracelet. It's a total of 14 pink stabilized rows and 14 chartreuse stabilized rows. In the next steps, we'll be modifying one of these stabilized rows. But before we continue, I'm just letting you know that I'm using Omniflex 15 pound high strength fishing line. It's a transparent string that's high in strength and works great with Ponybee projects and other things. With that being said, I'm just keeping you informed and just letting you know this is a personal choice, not a sponsor video. On this step, we're going to modify half of the stabilized rows of two. We'll start out by taking 6 inches of fishing line, matching up the ends. Then, we'll need to decide what stabilized row of beads we wanted to modify. For this bracelet, I've decided to pick chartreuse beads for this one. Next, we'll take one stabilized row of beads and add it to the string, just as you see here. Then, we'll take another stabilized row of beads and add it to the string as well. Once you get those beads on the string, you're going to run those toward the center. Then, you'll tie both ends of string together with a knot, bringing all of those beads together. When tying your string together, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure, ensuring that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Now that your knot is tied, you'll see that all the beads have come together, creating a block shape looking just like this. At this point, we'll carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. As I've said before, you can see that we created a modified bead block looking just like this. We'll modify all the chartreuse stabilized rows of beads into these bead blocks. I'll run through the steps once more showing you how it's done. Using 6 inches of fishing line and matching up the ends, we'll add one stabilized row of beads to that string. Then we're going to take another stabilized row of beads to that string, adding it to it as well. Run those beads toward the center, then tie both ends of string together with a knot, bringing all of those beads together. When tying your string together, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure, ensuring that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Now that the string is tied and all those beads are locked into place, you'll carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. As you can see, once again we've created another bead block looking just like this. And as I've mentioned before, we'll modify all of the chartreuse stabilized rows of beads into bead blocks. Now that all of our chartreuse rows have been modified into blocks, we're ready for the next steps and we can start adding these beads to the string. But before we continue, I'm just letting you know that I'm using Eskety Strings made by Pepperell Braiding Company. It's a round plastic lace that has a bit of flexibility to it, and it works great. With that being said, I'm just keeping you informed and just letting you know that this is a personal choice. It's not a sponsored video. For the next step, we'll need three feet of string. 
Then we're going to add a pink stabilized row of beads to that string. Now that we have those beads on the string, we're going to match up both ends of that string, pushing those beads toward the center of that string. This will be the first row of the bracelet. Be sure that that first row of beads stay in the center of the string to ensure that we have the same length of string to use on each side. As a quick tip, you can always use tape to hold down the beads to keep them in place, as you can see I've done here. From here, we'll take a chartreuse bead block and add it to the strings. You'll take one end of the string and run it through the row of beads just like this. Then we're going to take our other end of string and run it through the next row of beads, as you can see here. Once you have those beads on that string, you'll push those beads toward the center of that string, bringing all of those beads together. As a quick tip, be sure that those beads are in a tight formation, ensuring that the bracelet turns out correctly. With those beads on the string, this is exactly how it should look so far. Let's continue and add more beads to this bracelet. From here, we'll take one end of the string and add a pink stabilized row of beads to that string. Then, we're going to take our other end of string, and we're going to run it through all of those beads as well, going in the opposite direction. With both ends of strings coming out of each side, we'll pull both ends of the string until we've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. Be sure to pull that string just enough, keeping those beads in a tight formation. Just like we've done before, we're going to take one end of the string, and we're going to add a pink stabilized row of beads to that string. Then, we'll take our other end of string, run it through all of those beads as well, going in the opposite direction. When you get both ends of the string through those beads, you'll pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. At this point, we can add another chartreuse block to the strings. You'll take one end of the string and run it through a row of the chartreuse block, just like this. Then, we'll take our other end of string and run it through the next row, as you can see it here. Once you have both strings through those beads, you'll push those beads toward the top, bringing all of those beads together. Now that we have that chartreuse block added to the bracelet, we'll now add two more stabilized row of beads to it as well. Just like we've done before, we'll take one end of the string and add a stabilized row of beads to that string. Then we'll take our other end of string, run it through those beads as well, going in the opposite direction, getting that string through both ends of that bead, pulling both ends of the string until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. At this point, you should be familiar with the steps and start to see the pattern on how this bracelet is assembled. Just remember, after every chartreuse block has been added to the strings, there will be two stabilized rows of beads to follow. These are the pink beads that you see on the screen. So just continue adding these beads to the strings and to fulfill the length of a bracelet. As I've mentioned before, be sure to pull the strings just enough to keep those beads in a tight formation to ensure that this bracelet turns out as it should with some form of comfort and visual appeal. With this visual, you will see that this bracelet is pretty simple to assemble and has a unique look as the beads are in rows and columns plus this color scheme that stands out that can be seen. I think that pink and chartreuse are a great color scheme that go perfect together. Of course, you're always able to create this bracelet with whichever color scheme you desire. Leave a comment below letting me know what cool color combinations you choose to use to design your bracelet. Again, this visual should be the perfect reference giving you the insight on how this bracelet is designed. As I've mentioned before, you'll continue adding these beads in the same pattern until you're able to fulfill the length of a wearable bracelet. As I should mention, not all wrist sizes are the same, so be sure to adjust accordingly as you may need more or less beads depending on the size of the wrist as well as the size of the beads. Once you have enough beads to fulfill the length of a bracelet, the final row will end with one stabilized row of beads as you see here. This is what everything should look like so far. To turn this into a wearable bracelet, what we'll need to do is go to the end of the bracelet with the strings. We'll take one end of the string and run it through the first row of that bracelet. So watch close as I guide the string through these beads. Once you get that string through those beads and pull it through, everything should come together. Then from here, we'll have two ends of string that we'll tie together with a knot bringing all of those beads together. When tying your string, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure, ensuring that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Once your knot is tied and all those beads are locked into place, you'll carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string and your complex ladder stitch bracelet is now complete. And there you have it, another perfect bead bracelet design that looks fine and was fun to make. 
Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and you can create one just as great. If there's anything you would like to add, requests or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you are new or you just haven't already, don't forget that you can always subscribe if you want to be notified for more bee tutorials just like this one, hoping you'll tune in for the next one to satisfy your creative needs. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching TurboBeads.